Hey guys, I thought I'd show you my new uh, battery bank here. Um, yeah, it's actually these are uh, six volt batteries and bought these over at a uh, golf cart uh, place. And normally these batteries are about $200 each or they're pretty expensive. And they're kind of like a Trojan, but they're not a Trojan. And I'm uh, just taking off these clips because I'm gonna replace the uh, clips on here. But the guy only charged me for the cor the course because these are used. Was, actually, I got a good deal on them. They were only uh, uh, two years old. So, I mean, that was about a year. I guess I got them about a year ago and I got them for a camping trip. And I wanted to have some uh, battery for the uh, camping trip, but I'm going to rewire this in uh, series and then parallel. So, my, my goal is to make this one massive 12 volt battery. Uh, the nice thing about 6 volt batteries is. Uh, I mean, there's only you, can, you get a much larger battery and you get much thicker cells. So, your typical 12 volt battery has uh, six cells that are actually smaller. Whereas a, a six volt battery, um, there's only three cells, but the plates are actually larger and, and more uh, heavy duty. So that's why I wanted to get six volt batteries. Um, but one of the nice things about these batteries is they're actually a true deep cycle battery. So, I mean, that means they're not designed for starting. They're designed for deep cycle and that's it. So a lot of the boat batteries you get are kind of like a combination of starting and deep cycle. Whereas, I mean, these things are true deep cycle. So, uh, because I'm not gonna be starting any cars with this. This is just to power, you know, this, it's, it's, this is an emergency backup, you know, for my house. And then it's also gonna be like for a camping trip, I might grab like two of the batteries and just have one large 12 volt battery. I don't usually grab all six, but I just might grab two. Um, but I haven't charged these for a while, so uh, I, I was going through and charging them individually. But I never had enough, enough wires to uh, you know, get them in a big, uh, you know, like, what, like a series parallel. So I had to go to like Walmart and I bought a bunch of these little jumper cables. But uh, I'll show you real quick uh, how I wire these up, you know. And uh, so I go from. Uh, negative to positive. I can either go this way. This may want to do that. Sure. Well, negative to positive. I can try that. Then two clips. All right, so I'm gonna get this wired up. I don't, you guys don't need to watch me on this, but I'll, I'll get the uh, I'll get the uh, series wired up, and I'll show you how it's wired. And then I'll come back, and then I'll show you the uh, parallel. So what I'm doing is basically I'm making a uh, I'm taking two six volt batteries, and I'm making one 12 volt battery. And then from there, then I kind of it's like almost like wiring three batteries together because you know these are equivalent to each a, a, a pair is a, a 12 volt battery, 12 volt battery, 12 volt battery. So um, all right, I'll uh, come back with that got the uh, series wired up. So I just want to verify that I have, uh, I don't know if you guys can see that, I just want to verify that I have uh, 12 volts between each of these rows here. That 12, this hasn't been charged for a couple months. Maybe, uh, eh. I normally keep these on a float charge, but I was working on different projects and I'll show you that. Now this one doesn't look right. Okay, there we go. I wasn't gonna get contact there. Okay, 1211 and uh, negative positive. Okay, so 1231. So that one is a little bit better than the other two. So now I'm going to come back and uh, wire these into uh, parallel. So the parallel, on the negative pole, I'm going to bring these together. On the positive, I'm going to bring these together. So each of these is going to have, uh, you know, I'm going to like that. Trying to find a way to keep this clean, I guess. So I'll come back. Negative to negative. Okay. Another negative down here. Strip. And I think you guys get the idea here. Negative 
pull down here. So I'm gonna come back and I'll do the positive side and I'll test it again. All right. So for the positive leads, I'm just gonna run this. If I can get a good, uh, I'm just trying to find a good route that's not gonna interfere with getting the water. So I'm trying to find a route that doesn't interfere with the uh, the water terminals here. I can check for water occasionally here. These are actually a little bit too long. It's cabled, but. So the positive and the positive, so we should be So what's kind of funny is the the stronger batteries are the stronger. It's gonna the batteries will even out like this because the weaker batteries will the the stronger batteries batteries will charge the weaker batteries. So right now there's probably a slow drain going on right now. So I'm gonna do another voltage check here, and I should have a big massive battery now. And, uh, well, they haven't started smoking yet, so I guess I'm wiring them up correctly. There we go. So I'm getting 1220. So it actually is even itself out a little bit. These are some of the weaker batteries up here. So 1220, that's good. Now, where is my... All right guys, come back and I'm gonna hook up my... Um, I haven't charged these for a while. The cool thing I use it. This is my uh, it's called a uh, like a battery minder. It's pretty cool. It has a built-in desulfator. Uh, it's not very powerful, so it can't charge ver batteries very rapidly. But at this point, I don't want to do a rapid charge. I want to do a slow charge. So, like once it's done uh, charging, it uh, desulfates. So I'm gonna put that positive and then negative. So yeah, I mean, if you guys actually have a like a local golf cart store, I mean, like I said, I got these for less than a hundred bucks. Uh, the guy just charged me for pretty much the cores. But I was looking at these batteries, and these batteries are probably uh, you know easily uh, you know at least one hundred and fifty to one hundred two hundred dollars each, depending on what you get. You know. Trojans are really expensive, so but these aren't Trojans. So yeah, I'm plugging this in. It's charging up. I don't know if you can see that. You know, it's not fully drained, so I'm at about in the 50% range, or, you know, 25 to 50% capacity. And so, really, I just have this to run my inverter. So, in case I have a power outage, I can uh, run my 12-volt accessories directly off the batteries. Uh, because I do actually have a lot of 12-volt camping accessories that I've purposely got 12-volt so I can run a campsite and not like a, because I don't like to use the inverter if I don't have to, so I try to get accessories with 12 volt. So I can do a direct conversion without having to, or direct connection without having to do a conversion between like uh, an inverter here. But yeah, this is my 1200 watt inverter. Um, this is not powerful enough to power a refrigerator. So I really just have this to power my computers and radios and emergency gear, so. But, all right, that's it. Cool, that's my new uh, emergency uh, battery backup system. So, um, I mean, this thing is designed to run a golf cart for all day. So, I mean, that's a pretty large motor. So, I'm thinking this could uh, definitely power a lot of my accessories for a couple days. You know, computer, maybe a TV, like one of those new LCD TVs, not or new LED LCD TVs. But, all right, cool. Let this thing charge, but. Yeah, for less than a hundred bucks, full blown like emergency power bank here. So yeah, if you have a used golf cart store in your area, or like a, or like a golf course, you know, you might want to see if they have any old batteries. And like I said, these batteries were only two years old. So, um, and then I, I looked at the actual like uh, lead plates, and they looked they weren't even they weren't even sulfated. So, 
All right, cool, man.